way to get creating in clay is by making pinch pots. So here is a video on how to make a pinch pot quickly, easily, and give it a smooth surface. Before you begin, you need to make sure that you wedge your clay to um, improve the consistency through your clay and to remove any air bubbles. And then to begin a pinch pot, you need to make sure that you take a ball of clay that is this, that fits in the size of your hand, so approximately the size of an apple. Otherwise, it's too big to manage because I'm going to be using my thumb a lot for this and as you can see for this, my thumb can't even reach the bottom. So what I do is I just turn and twist and then now I have a manageable size. It is a little bit inconsistent in shape so I'm just going to press and squeeze with my palm. So this is like a muscle in here and I like the shape of this so I'm using that to kind of squeeze my clay into a more manageable shape so that way it has the best chance. I don't want to do too much contact with my clay because the more I touch it, the more I'm drawing it out. And sometimes when we are new to clay, we have a tendency to keep on rolling and pinching until the clay starts crumbling because our hands have taken out all the moisture. And you can see where it's already drying on my skin. I'm just absorbing it like crazy. So now this is a template or tool for my pinch pot that I am going to take advantage of because if you feel the palm of your hand, it's kind of like a dip. And that is going to be almost like the um, base of my pottery wheel that I will spin my pot upon. So as I turn, it's also turning in my hand and it's making it nice and round. This is my potter's thumb and I will use it a lot as well. I'm going to use my fingers to hold the um, wall. And as I pinch, I kind of do this, like an alligator on the outside. So you'll see me doing this and know that it looks like this. Now, I need to make sure that I practice for it first because I don't want to make my walls too thin. Remember that your clay shrinks um, 15 to 20% usually. Higher fire clays or clays that have less grog will definitely uh, shrink a lot more. So porcelain based grog or clays, porcelain will shrink quite a lot. So you can see my clay has a lot of grog in it, which is little bits of clay. And um, they are in the body to make it stronger because I, in my own world, Kathleen McGivern, I, um, I actually, I do clay professionally and I make big sculptures and I need the grog to make my sculptures nice and big and stay big without falling over. So we're gonna take our thumb and we're going to press it in down through the center of our ball of clay. Now we need to not poke through. We need to kind of guess and make sure that we have about a half inch to an inch of clay at the bottom. And now it should look like a ball with a hole. Take your pinching alligator fingers and remember we can't pinch any thinner than half an inch because it shrinks and we don't want to make it too thin because it will also crack or crumble eventually. So we're going to do light pinches and slowly it will open. If I squeeze it all in one go, it'll, well I can show you. I'll put that guy to the side. If I have, imagine this is my, my pot and I squeeze it really hard, it's going to look really crazy really fast and it's going to look something like this. And this is inconsistent and quite crazy and cracking because sometimes we just keep going and we say, look how big it is! But it's just a crazy looking object. So please don't do that. We save that for experimenting on our own time. But to make a nice pinch pot, we take our alligator fingers and we open it up, slowly rotating it. As I pinch, I'm also turning it as you can see. So I pinch and pull just a little, pinch, pull a little, pinch, pull a little, and I rotate it again, imagining that my hand is my pottery wheel and my other hand is the motor. And you can see that it's a lot smoother on the outside now, if I feel 
my pinch pot, I can see that some walls are a little bit thicker than others. So I need to keep going and I need to pay careful attention to those areas that are not ideal. I am going to leave the rim for last because you can already see there's a lot of stress on it. So I'm only focusing on the inside shape to make sure it looks nice and smooth and that the thickness is consistent. Now that I'm, I'm happy with it, I'm going to just press out that bottom a little further and use my finger to smooth the inside. And now tap it on the table so that way it can sit properly. And now I'm going to address the edge. Now, when I do that, I'm going to hold my hand in a way that it's going to support the walls because I don't want to lose the shape. And then I'm going to, again, use my alligator to pinch and turn my little pot. This time he's on the ground. Okay, now you can see that my pot is looking a little bit more like a pot. I need to compress the edge to make sure that it doesn't crack. So I'm going to hold and I'm going to pinch and pull around with my thumb to smooth off my edge and to compress the clay particles. If you're finding it's a little dry, please do not soak it with a sponge. Often we like to soak clay with sponges, but that just makes really wet clay. And it just needed a little bit of moisture, not a ton. Often the sponges like wipe away the clay material and you're left with all the grog and then your clay is like super sandy. We didn't need that to begin with. We just needed a little moisture. So go to the dollar store, get yourself a nice water bottle. Hopefully it's only a dollar. And spray. Do not sponge and soak. That is not an ideal method ever. So right now I'm just going to compress that bottom to make sure it is nice and firm and flat. That way if you do want to eat or drink out of it, it's nice and not yucky. Nobody wants to drink out of a rough inside bowl. Ew. Our spoon would be feeling very unhappy to go across a yucky bowl. All right. Our rim is nice and done. Now, if we flip it to the outside, it looks like I pinched a pot, to be honest. And yeah, we could leave it there. Or um, some people like to say, sponge it to make it smooth. Well, I'm gonna tell you, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> Please use a rib. Now ribs can be rubber, they can be wood, they can be, um, in all different shapes of rubber, they can metal, other wood. Um, I have more than this. I have like, I have a problem called I like to buy tools. And I'm sure that's the problem of every artist everywhere. Now I'm just going to use this one rib and show you how we do this. So I'm being super gentle with my hands right now. And I'm going to just pull this along the surface, working it out, rotate, work out all the bumps with my rib. If you find it's like kind of, um, if it's not moving smoothly up across the surface, take your spray bottle. That's it. Do not sponge people. And oh my gosh, it moves easily. How nice. We did not need a sponge. I 
Okay, sometimes you might be like, but the rib doesn't like get rid of um, all these. The rib doesn't get rid of all these um, finger marks that I have. I'm kind of still unhappy with how not smooth it is. Well, one, you can keep, you can kind of press with your rib to kind of work them smooth. Like you can see that this is a very smooth surface. But if you're still unhappy or you pinched too hard, this is another technique. You can score the surface and cut out and scratch upon all your finger markings that you created in your pinching process. Then you're going to spray the surface again. And then you're going to take your handy dandy rubber rib and you're going to pull down on the surface. And what is happening is you cut out um, the clay memory and deleted it. So now you're creating a new surface and it's so easy. This is like the smooth, this is the way you get a smooth surface instantaneously. Like pretty, pretty cool. Check it out. And you can even see like this with a scoring method versus, okay, well, I've completely, I mean, I have some finger goopings in there from holding it and manhandling it for this video. But you can see like the difference, like this still has the dents and this is magnificent. Okay. Good enough for now. Okay, last, you might be thinking, well, I really, really want to put some decorations on there. I'm gonna get my scoring tool, um, that nice little needle tool, and I'm gonna scratch in all of my details. Well, let me tell you, please do not use a needle tool for scratching in details. That is really for cutting. Please use wood tools that are much gentler and calmer and make bigger marks to make details. That way you can see your details after you have glazed it. So all you have to do now is use whatever lovely wood tool you want. And you can add in marks. You can cut them out if you needed to. This is called subtractive method. Now I didn't do my walls too. Um, I didn't make too thin of walls, so I'm actually able to do this without going through my clay wall. All right, I don't even know what that is, but um, you can also add things onto the outside. So you could take your clay and add on top, press it. Imagine this is a really amazing design. And then just tap the edges down so it stays. again you might be thinking well now it must be time to sponge this to make it perfect to get rid of all those boogers and the answer is no use your spray bottle never use your sponge unless you really feel like it's necessary you can use your spray bottle and finger and smooth out some of that you could also use your spray bottle and a paintbrush. Oh, I did not clean this properly.
okay? So you can imagine if this was a face that make nice folds in the face or whatever. This is just a random whateverness, and but it's a good uh, way to show you kind of what I do, okay? So please avoid sponges, use ribs, and pinch gently to make yourself a nice little pinch pot. When you're done, place your pinch pot on newspaper and uh, cover it with plastic lightly um, to let it dry evenly. The faster you rush clay to dry, the bigger the chance you will have of cracking happening because of the fast shrinkage, because all that water will leave really rapidly. So it's best to let it dry slowly. Also, you need to dry it on newspaper to allow the air to also circulate underneath the piece again to allow it to dry evenly and so that way the clay doesn't drag on the rough unforgiving surface of like a wear board. Um, after it's been fired you can totally apply your favorite glaze to your piece or experiment with other things such as watercolor paints and acrylic paints although those will not be food safe. Only the glaze that of course is lead free and food safe is safe to eat off of after it's been fired. Um, I would love to know what you like to do with your pinch pots in your classroom in, or in your own world and uh, what grades uh, you teach it to. Please leave your comments or response in the comment section below the video um, and as well this will allow you the chance of being my comment star in a future video. Like this video and click the bell to receive notifications of when new episodes arrive. As well, don't forget to subscribe to this Artastic channel. For more art tutorials, head on over to my blog at MsArtastic.com. And for more art teaching resources, head on over to my Teachers Pay Teacher store, Ms. Artastic. You can search Ms. Artastic um, anywhere, even on TPT, and you'll find me there. For more behind the scenes footage, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Ms. Artastic. And of course, all the links to what I just had said are in my comments section, so you can just click them and head on over to where you need to go. See you next time.